Welcome back to Betsay's preview of week four of the Autumn Internationals. Do I need to tell you who I am? I'm Gunu. I'm Jim Hamilton. Who? Who, who, who are you? Who are you? I'm Jim Hamilton. Oh, Andy Good. Who? Exactly. This week we're going to be looking at England against Samoa, Wales versus New Zealand, and the gallant Scots playing against Australia. So let's get into it, Goody. Let's. So England, the mighty England. Mighty, we are mighty. Well, did well against Australia at the weekend, up against Samoa. Yes. They're going to pose a challenge? They will physically, uh, but just going back to that England-Australia game, uh, England's biggest ever victory against an Australian rugby team. Man, I can't believe that. We did flatter to deceive a little bit. The scoreline isn't reflective of the game. Um, we had a bit of the luck of the... The, the, the ref. Yeah, the ref was um, on our side, let's say, with a few decisions. Obviously, disallowing two Australian tries. The first one, letter of the law, Michael Hooper's try should have been disallowed. The second one... I would Chris, have given that. I'd have given it two. Uh, but the letter of the law, he's right. He starts to move forward from an offside position. Second try, Rob Shaw is about five yards offside. That should have been penalised. Potentially a penalty try. And it should have been binned earlier. He should have been sin as well for taking out Curtly Bill, wasn't it? So, England rode their luck. We got lucky, but ultimately Danny Kerr comes on and uh, puts a nice couple of grubber kicks in. And we end up winning 30 points to six. The Australians crumble. But this week we go to Samoa. Um, and Samoa are going to be very physical. Um, England might make a couple of changes, but we really need an emphatic performance because although the scoreline was huge against the Australians, um, anyone knows watching that game, it wasn't a fair reflection of the game. The last 10 minutes we got three tries that were opportunist tries, let's call it. Um, the Australians had kind of emotionally crumbled as well. Um, but Samoa's going to be a big challenge for us. You've played against the Samoans a few times. They're physical boys, as we know, and we saw in week two of the Autumn Internationals that Samoa... They gave Scotland a good run, didn't they? Physical, Polynesian, South Sea Islanders, and they've had a few off-field problems. That seems to have been resolved. Uh, we'll see that. We'll watch this space. But great against Scotland. Not so great at the weekend, though, were they, the Samoans? No, they weren't. Over in Romania, they lost, which was a bit of a surprise. After Cold. It's it cold was, out it there. It was cold. Very cold. And the, and the South Sea Islanders didn't like it. Um, but look, trust me, it's going to be cold at Twickenham again on Saturday. And let's have a little look at the England players and guys that are going to make an impact. For me, Danny Kerr came off the bench at the weekend. He was absolutely outstanding. I think he only got about 12 minutes, but he created two tries through kicks through, up the pace a little bit himself, and then scored with the final try of the game for England. He's going to be really important. Do, I feel, do you think he might start? I think he might start. I think he's earned that off the bench last week. Ben Youngs has played well, but... This game against Samoa, it's a bit of a prep for the World Cup against Tonga. Tonga in our group, so similar sort of South Sea Island physicality. It'd be great to see Danny get, Kerr get a start, bring some impetus and attack, bring some pace, which is what we've lacked a little bit, really, I feel. You think they've called me up with a bit of pace? You're Scottish. Oh, yeah, yes, I am. Yes, yeah. I am. So in the forwards, I've gone for Courtney Laws. For me, he's been one of the standout players probably in the last 18 months, not, ju not just for England, but for Northampton. When he's played, he's played well. Also for the British Lions, it's going to be interesting to see what Eddie Jones does this week. Uh, Sam Underhill's injured. You know, who are they going to play in the second row? Will they go with Launchbury and Cruz? Will they go with Toji? Will they put Courtney Laws at six? It'll be interesting to see. But for me, if this man plays, he's making huge impacts. Everyone talks about his tackling. We've seen that for years. The last five, six years, we've seen Courtney Laws smashing boys. When he carries the ball now, the effectiveness we saw a couple of times against Australia in his own 22, carrying out the ability to offload. So... He's a quality, quality player now. We saw that he missed out a few years ago on the initial Lions tour around the World Cup. His form wasn't great, but he's really, uh, he's really kicking it on now. He is. So. Obviously, you saw Sam Underhill go off. Mara Toji came on in the second row. He moves to back row, so he's got that double-edged sword to his game, hasn't he? So, really important player for England. And as you said, he gets England on the front foot time after time. But let's have a little look at the Samoans. And people might not know too many of their players, but one man for me, Tim Nanai Williams, who plays fly half for them. He's actually an outside centre, winger or fullback, but he plays fly half for them. And this Samoan team, counter-attacking or playing loose and fast, are deadly. They've got some unbelievable finishers. David Lemmy at the ripe old age of 46, or however old he is on the wing. But Tim Nanai Nanai Williams, fantastic player. Yeah, he's good. He was good against Scotland. He's not got a great kicking game, though. Against Scotland, against Scotland mate, his kicking was poor, and ultimately that's why Scotland won the game. So, yeah, big game for him, definitely. OK, let's quick, have a look. Quick score prediction? Oh, score prediction? Uh, England comfortably. Yeah. I'm it all depends on the conditions, though, doesn't it? Yeah. You don't want to say that it's going to be 30 points to 10, and then you get to Twickenham and it's raining. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's going to be raining. OK. OK, it's England. Yep. Yeah. In November, I'm going to go 25. They're going to score 12. Okay. Jim thinks 25 12. I'm going to say 
England need an attacking performance. England need to score tries. Johnny May, I expect him to bag a couple. It'll be really interesting to see who plays outside centre. Maybe Henry Slade gets another shot. Love to see Ford um, on the bench and get Farrell in at 10 to see how devastating he can be um, leading the charge at 10. For me, I'm going to go England 42, Samoa 16. Oh, I've got, I, I should have gone higher. I should, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I should. Maybe the game of the weekend coming up now. Wales versus New Zealand. OK, both teams are going to look for a performance. OK, Wales stuttered to a victory against a very good and courageous Georgian side. We saw they lost the week before against Australia. So form-wise, Wales aren't doing that well, are they? No, they're not. Um, yeah, they made 14 changes last week to play against Georgia from the team that lost to Australia. And again, just scraped over the line 13-6. Awful game of rugby, and the Georgians perhaps had an opportunity to, to draw it towards the end uh, if it had gone to uh, scrummaging, but they, the Welsh went to uncontested scrums. Which, scrum gate. Scrum gate by scrum Warren gate. Gatlin, who'd have thought it? <laughs> um, but the Welsh, they're going to make loads of changes. They'll get their first teamers back in. Um, obviously, guys like Dan Bigger are going to come into the team now. Um, I thought Rhys Priestland played really well against Georgia, but Dan Bigger's the man at 10 for them. His axis with Owen Williams at 12 is going to be really important in terms of the attacking prowess and how they attack, because New Zealand, although they stuttered to victory against Scotland and potentially should have lost that game, they have... Potentially? Uh, well, yeah. They should have lost that game. OK, sorry, Jim. Robbed. Scottish Jim. Robbed. Um, I th the way you look at it, the Welsh have to up their game by 50% at least from their performance against Australia. 50%? Because, well, yeah, I've been a little bit disappointed with... 90%. Mark, like, 90. Um, mate, they've got to be... To, to get anywhere near New Zealand, who would have had a rocket this week after the back of that performance, and Wales are potentially losing one of their best attacking players and Liam Williams is injured. Yeah. Mate, we saw what he did for the, Brit the British Lions. Uh, they need to up their performance significantly to get a result. The issue is they've also got another star performer, Jonathan Davis, out injured as well. He injured his ankle, I think it was, with the last play of the game against Australia. So their best two attacking threats gone, which makes Dan Bigger even more important as fly half. And talking of important, I've picked out Alan Wynne Jones, captain, fantastic player, dipped in form a little bit last, last season, came good. Rightly or wrongly, was picked to play in the Lions team. A lot of people thought that he didn't warrant his place. I think he did, having watched it. For Ospreys, we mentioned when they played Saracens the other week, in great, great form. You know, without saying it, the number of caps that he's got is obviously with Stephen Moore there, another veteran of the game. But his leadership and his want and desire, I'm sure, will be brimming at the weekend. He performs well, OK? Fallatown performs well. They're big players. They maybe stand an opportunity. I don't think they do. You know, I think potentially New Zealand... I don't know if they'll scrape it. New Zealand have had a lot of changes on this tour. Potentially eight of their starting line players either injured or not selected on a sabbatical. It'd be interesting for them. Yeah, it will. And it's going to be their 14th Test match of the year, which is a huge amount of rugby to have been played. Um, for that reason, they've left Ben Smith at home on a sabbatical. Brodie Retallick stayed home as well. Um, one of their key players, Dane Coles, the hooker, he's out injured. He's ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament, so he's out for about six to nine months. But you've managed to pick out a forward that's pretty impressive, haven't you? I have. I wanted to talk about Richard McCaw. I want to talk about him, but I'm not because he's retired. My favourite player. Favourite player ever. Good. Yeah. But what? this man, no, no, not you. Okay. But this man, Sam Kane, similar. He's similar to you, Sam Kane, this yeah, guy. Yeah, good player. Big boots to fill. There's a few question marks. Can he fill that void for New Zealand? Of course, naturally, you're going to be compared to Richard McCaw. You're not Richard McCaw. He's the best player to ever play the game of rugby, ever. OK, this guy against Scotland was pretty average. Let's be honest, discipline was quite poor. I thought John Barkley played very well against him at the weekend. So he needs a big game. He needs a big game against Wales. Great back row. We, you know, we speak about Faletau, obviously they're without Warburton. But this guy is their link man, their physicality. I've picked him out as a key player. If he plays well at the weekend, like New Zealand teams have done in the past, when their seven plays well... New Zealand go on and win. Who have you picked out? Yeah, you look in the, in the back line and Sonny Bill Williams is an absolute rock star when he's on form. He's similar to me. He's, um, Mate, he actually looks like me. Uh, he's S better looking and more athletic. Well, but yeah, apart so from un, that, so you've probably got about the same height. That's exactly. about it. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's talk about Sonny Bill Williams. Against France, he wasn't very good. Slapped the ball out, gave a penalty try away. But against Scotland at the weekend, some touches of brilliance. 
A little grubber kick through for McKenzie's try was outstanding. The offload that led to uh, Bowden Barrett's try in the corner as well, that was world class. And as you said, with Sam Kane, when Sonny Bill Williams is on form, when he's playing his offloading game, he's so hard to defend against. Whether you go up top and tackle him, he shrugs you off. If you go low, he gets the offloads away as well. So he can light up any attacking game for, for the All Blacks. Really important. And for me, the All Blacks have beaten Wales now 29 times on the spin. Is Gar that what it is? It's that. Oh, Guarantee yeah. it's going to be 30 at the weekend. Is that what you think? So you're going for New Zealand 30 points to what? Uh, it's going to be well. It's going to be their 30th win on the spin against Wales, and I'm going to say they're going to win 42-20. Oh, big scoring game! Yeah, high oh, scoring been, game. The roof going to be closed? The roof's always closed. Oh, that'll be great. Then I'm going to go for a high scoring game. I'm going to go 45 points to New Zealand. Yep. I'm going to go 29 to Wales. Oh, you I think, think Wales will score that many. I think Wales will start really well. Yeah. I genuinely do. I think that they know that they need to play well. Gatlin, Howley. This is a huge week for Welsh rugby. I'm not saying that they'll win, but they definitely need a performance, that's for sure. Certainly do. Should we talk about the big game? There's another big game, isn't there? The biggest. The biggest game of the weekend, in my opinion, is Scotland versus Australia. How unlucky. They were very unlucky. And you we were robbed. Robbed. I think, I think the better team won, just. Robbed. You reckon? But they had opportunities, didn't they? I still haven't forgiven, and I'm sure no one in Scotland's forgiven Kieran Reid, slapping the ball out of uh, Gray's hand, didn't he? If that he was me, I'd, be, I'd get sent off. You would have, and deservedly so. He should have been simbined, which would have taken New Zealand down to 13 players, and with 10 minutes to go, Stuart Hogg makes that lovely break towards the end, which could have gotten the try. Had the conversion gone over, they'd have won the game. It would have been history. Scotland never beaten New Zealand. They came so close, didn't they? They Unfortunately, did. they just fell short again. That was as close as it got. But I just want to put a couple of things in perspective for Scotland, right? You talk about injuries, OK, and you talk about influential players. Scotland are down to some of their third-choice players in position. Alistair Dickinson's injured, the loose head. Gordon Reid, the second-choice loose head's injured. Who? Gordon Reid. Gordy. Okay. Gordy. His name's Goon. They call him Goon. OK. Good-looking bloke. Yeah. Ross Ford's injured. Yeah. WP now broke his arm against Samoa. Richie Gray's injured. Yeah. Who's going to play back row? Hemish Watson's injured. Yep. Luke Hamilton went off injured. Ryan Wilson's injured. Yep. Tim Swinson's injured. Loads of injuries. Greg Laidlaw's injured. Is Jim Hamilton going to be fit? And I, could, I could get a call. I mean, genuinely, Is your phone it, on? it's that bad. Phone's on. Phone's on now. It's hot. Good job it's not Vern Cotter. He won't be ringing me. <laughs> but, but, mate, you talk about a well-coached team. Scotland a well-coached team. Against Australia at the weekend, it's going to be difficult because they've got to try and raise the physicality again. But Australia are a team that Scotland notoriously do well against. In the summer, we beat them. We, down in Sydney. You did. We did. And last year in the Autumn Internationals, really close game as well, wasn't it? 23-20? Yeah. Something like that. And then you go back to the World Cup 2015, and it still hurts the Scots. They were robbed again by a refereeing decision. Yeah. One day, Scotland might get the rub of the green with the referee, and it might be this weekend against Australia. We shall see. And we've picked out some key players. Of course we have. I'm going to go straight to this man, Johnny Gray. Look at him go with his brother Rich, who's injured in the background there. So Johnny has had to step up to the plate now. OK, missed out on the British and Irish Lions tour. OK, rightly or wrongly, potentially could have, should have gone ahead of Cruz in hindsight. Very similar to Launchbury. You know, I've wanted to see Johnny Gray add a new dimension to his game. Yes, he gets through a bundle of work. You know, he, he tops the tackle charts, 20-odd tackles a game, loads of ball carries. But for me, I want to see some physical stuff. I want to see him carrying ball. Harder than we've ever seen. Harder than I have ever carried the ball. We want to see him putting big tackles in. If you look at him over the last couple of weeks, that's exactly what he's done. Bagged himself a try as well. Got over the line. It was great to see. And he's in good form. He looks fit. He looks sharp. And if he plays well, he's one of them players now. He's a talisman. Sim similar to Wynn Jones for Wales. Similar to Courtney Laws for England. He's got the capabilities to do that. And he's obviously improved his performance since you had a little pep talk with him. Hadn't exactly. You? I, talk <clears throat> I told him. I told him. <clears throat> In the national newspapers, what he needed to do, he's taken it on board and look at him go. So, Jim, in the backs, I've picked out Stuart Hogg as an absolute revelation for Scotland. He's probably, on form, the best fullback in the world at the minute, only because Israel Folau isn't playing and also Ben Smith's on a sabbatical. But he's outstanding for Scotland. Every time he touches the ball, he makes breaks. He's strong, he's quick. And he could have been a hero at the weekend, couldn't he? If he'd have just put that little chip kick in over Bowden Barrett at the end instead of making the outside break. I think Pergos would have scored, wouldn't he? Immortality. He would have had the keys to Edinburgh Castle. OK? He'd need to get a haircut. He couldn't be seen around Edinburgh Castle with <laughs> hair like that. But, mate, you're right. They actually got him into the game a lot more. We saw the week before against Samoa, he touched the ball maybe twice. He needs the ball in his hand. When he does, mate, he's one of them players, isn't he, that can just light up a pitch. So, definitely, mate, he's a, a, he, is the key. he is the key 
for Scotland to play well and to win, for sure. And you talk about Australia, you talk about their kicking game against England. It wasn't particularly good at times. Um, they kick loosely to him. He's going to absolutely rip them to shreds, isn't he? Exactly. But I've been impressed with Australia. Made their physicality. I don't think the scoreline reflected the game. They obviously beat New Zealand on their last game before they headed over. But I've picked out a guy who is... A ball carrier. He's he a can carry a ball. ball carrier. So copy Kepu. Yeah. Mate, if you watch the game at the weekend, you'd be thinking, go on, he's a centre, he's a winger. He's not, he's a tight head prop. Yeah. Goody. And that is what Australia have been lacking, that physicality around their forwards. Now, he is a quality player, so he can carry balls to Scotland. You've got to be really careful because it isn't just in open play. He's... He's carrying the ball from kickoffs. Mate, he's getting out the scrum. He's picking the ball up and running the length. <laughs> he's that good. So I've picked him out. But I've been, to be, to be honest, I've been impressed with Australia. I think it's going to be a cracking game. And they've got some amazing backs. Who have you gone for? Yeah, well, I mean, th there are some amazing backs. Uh, Bernard Foley's the guy I've picked out at number 10. He's the most important player for them because when he plays well, the threats outside him like Kuandrani and Karevi, there's some fantastic options there. Kurtley Beal at fullback. But for me... Um, if he's on form, Bernard Foley, he's a bit ropey from the kicking tee. Yeah, so he's, not, he's not a great kicker. Yeah. He's, it's ugly sometimes, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. They're literally just dying over the posts, aren't they? So, um, for me, it's uh, really important. If he's on form, going forward in attack, he's an outstanding player. You saw the way he opened up England's defence at times. Little inside balls to Karevi, etc. But He's good, isn't he, Karevi? Karevi's a monster. So, you look at it, I think Rhys Hodge should be get, given the goal-kicking duties, alleviate the pressure from Bernard Foley for that, just time to concentrate on his attacking game and his kicking game in the, the field of play. Don't kick loosely to Stuart Hogg, but when he's on form, Bernard Foley, and Australia on the front foot, he's been the key to their victories over Wales and over the All Blacks a few weeks ago. He's just got to get his foot through. He's just got to, like, you know... Well, he's, he's right-footed, oh, but don't worry right, about that. The other way, yeah. yeah. That way, oh, I can't do that one because <laughs> of the back. But, yeah, so, who have you got... Let me tell you, Australia are a team that Scotland, that we, the Tories, do well against. Yep. I'm going for a Scotland victory. It's going are to be you? tight. Yeah, I am. I think it's going to be glorious. Yes. So I said a glorious defeat against New Zealand. It's going to be a glorious victory. I'm going to go for 18-15. 18-15. So yeah. they're always close games, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're always close. I think last year it was 23-20 uh, in the Autumn Internationals. That obviously the World Cup debacle. <sighs> so close. That was a point, I think, as well and the last kick of the game towards the end of the, with a controversial penalty. But Scotland did beat, as you said, Australia over in Sydney Let me in the hear summer. you say it. Let me hear you say I'm going to say, while I think Scotland could win, I'm going to back Australia. Oh, of course you are. It was close. I just think Scotland's energy reserves and emotional energy as well as physical energy have been emptied after that game against New Zealand. And yes, they might fight back and come back strongly against the Aussies, but I think the Aussies will be hurting really badly for their biggest ever loss against England at Twickenham. Like I said, it's going to be close. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go 21-18 to Australia. Oh, I can't back the Scots. Man, I hate you. I, I just hate can't you. back the Scots. Exactly. So we've previewed the big games. There's a few other games going to be played in the shadows, though, isn't there? Let's talk a little bit about them. Yeah, there is. Uh, Italy are playing South Africa, um, and you'd cast your minds back a year. Autumn Internationals last year, the Italians beat the South Africans, um, and there's going to be a lot of interest in that game. I think South Africa bouncing back off their victory um, against the French at the weekend. Surprising. Surprising victory. It was, especially after getting hammered by Ireland two weeks ago. Um, I think they'll go to... Italy, they'll remember the game in the last autumn internationals where Italy won. They'll be looking for some revenge, and I think South Africa will win that game. I'm the same. I reckon South Africa will win. And then we go to Dublin. Ireland play Argentina. Um, you cast your minds back two years to the World Cup. Argentina destroyed Ireland in the quarterfinal. Um, it was a sad end to Paul O'Connell's career, tore the hamstring off the bone. Um, so the Irish will remember that, but Ireland are in some good form. They changed many players last week to beat the Fijians, and really close game that was. But two weeks ago, they smashed the South Africans um, in Dublin as well. So I'm backing Ireland to win that game against Argentina, who beat Italy last weekend. They did. I'm the same. I'm backing Ireland. I just think that they're a form team. I think Argentina, yes, they're OK. They're a stuffy team. Ireland have str struggled notoriously in the past against the Argentine physicality. But I think it's going to be not a comfortable victory, but I'm with you. I think Ireland will win. And then the last game, we go over to France. France against Japan. Um, France are a team, they're an absolute enigma. No one knows what's going to happen. But they need it. They, they need a win. They desperately need a win. They lost to South Africa last weekend in Paris. Um, they're a team that their coaching, for me, is poor. Guy Noves, he's stale. He's past his sale by date. The French don't look like a team that are moving forward and seeing where they're going and improving week on week. 
Japan will come and hope to do that giant killing again, like they did in the World Cup against South Africa. How good was that? That, that was, was an amazing, amazing game. But then you go back to two weeks ago, they got absolutely hammered by Australia. Um, I think it was in Tokyo. So Japan will want to right those wrongs against a Tier 1 nation. They'll put pressure on France, but for me, France should be too good for them and win by 15 to 20 points. I'm with you. France victory. You're literally just copying. I'm just copying. You always get it right, don't you? Uh, I know. You always get it right. I try and be controversial. But that's it. That's our preview of week four of the autumn. We can't wait. But just remember, OK, me and Goody here, we're here every single week. Look at us. Because bet safe, they're the principal, but they're together, aren't they, with Saracens? Who? Saracens. Yeah, the mighty Saracens. That's right. We're like that. Like that. Entwined. Crossed. <laughs>